night a few moments ago. They drew lots to see who would go first with our first question. Some put by listeners to BBC Radio Stoke. And uh, the long or short straw, I don't know which, went to Jack Brereton for the concern. Across the city are important and have their role to play uh, in the future of the city. And it's important that with the investment that's going into our city that we put investment into all of our towns. Paul Nuttall for UKIP. Is Stoke or Hanley more important? Are within that constituency and there deserves to be equality right across the board. What is evident clearly is that the constituency needs investment and I believe I'm the best candidate on the panel. And unlock further growth. Zulfikar Ali for the Liberal Democrats. Well I think the biggest threat at this time um, in history for our jobs including ceramics is uh, leaving European single market and if we do then there's a high degree of uncertainty. If you look at the article by Professor Jeff Pugh who is a professor of applied economics uh, Staffordshire University, uh, there's certainly going to be quite a lot of uh, uh, job losses and manufacturing losses in short term. Jack Brereton for the Conservatives. Well, I think it's uh, absolutely important that we have that trade uh, deal with the European Union. And in leaving uh, the European Union, obviously this area voted... Use renewable energy if you just use fossil fuels. The Netherlands produces 49% of its energy from renewables. Why, don't we, why aren't we doing the same? If we invest in that we will be able to make the ceramic industry more efficient and create better jobs. And also, we need to start backing building affordable housing. Because all of that housing will use products from the ceramic industry to creating jobs here and making our industry. The, uh, the British Ceramics Confederation, they, you know, they were quite open that they, uh, they wanted to... Uh, ..in that we need uh, to ensure that we have a free trade deal with the European Union because 50% of British people. And I want to make one last point. Okay, Gareth is going to say, oh, but your attendance record is only 42%. No, 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 well, no. That's, that, 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 that's what you us people usually say from the Labour Party. It is, right? But I don't believe in that Parliament. It's in Brussels. I want to... A Stoke-on-Trent Central by-election special here on BBC Radio Stoke. ...for 50 to be triggered. Would they have gone with the Brexit vote or would they have gone against it? What do you think they should do? Whichever way their constituency voted... No. Uh, okay. And our leader, Caroline Lucas, didn't. Gareth Snell mm. for Labour. Like Ruth Smead and Rolf Lello, the other MPs for Stoke, I would have voted to trigger Article 50. Paul Nuttall for UKIP. Uh, pretty obvious, but I, I, think ask. It, I, I think it should have been triggered six months ago. Jack Absolutely, Brayton. I would have voted to respect that. And our oh, Prime Minister Theresa May is the only one with that clear plan to deliver. I think you also need to ask Gareth about his own MP. They couldn't have made it any clearer, okay. and we should have done it. Zolfi Ali for uh, the Liberal Democrats. Not unless there's a clear promise that there will be another chance for people to have a final say on the European Union. I, th I think it started with the democratic process and should end with the democratic process. People given uh, a consent that you should divorce. Okay. This weekend in Soul on Trent, we enjoy another session of classic Northern Soul and Motown memories. And in the second hour, it's my pleasure to present you a stunning selection of floor-packing oldies from one of the country's best-loved DJs, Stoke on Trent's Keith Minchell. Selected from Keith's time behind the turntables at the Golden Torch All Nighters in Tunstall, the Casino in Wigan, and the Highland Room sessions at the Blackpool Mecca, everyone's a winner. We can get Paul Nuttall for UKIP. Uh, well, basically, the, uh, the, the the city needs money. I mean, it, it needs investment to come in. It, it obviously needs a house building program. I mean, there hasn't been a council house built here. For Why don't we have an arena where we could bring boxing to, or or bands, or s sport darts, whatnot? You know, Nottingham's just got one. Liverpool has one. Manchester has one too. I'd also like to see the scrapping of HS2 and an improvement. So use that money to improve local transport networks. And I think that's a great idea by the Greens. Actually, you know. Wouldn't this place benefit from a good transport network, a good tram system? Jack Brayton. Jobs are absolutely critical in this election, and I've made that one of my top priorities. And it's not just about more jobs, but better jobs, better skilled jobs, and better paid jobs for the people of Stoke-on-Trent. And I've already been delivering in the role that I've held in the Cabinet over the last two years, so I'm responsible for delivering a uh, nearly £500 million investment programme in the city. And things like the Ceramic Valley Enterprise Zone has already delivered in the last year 
uh, over a thousand new jobs. So that's already helping to deliver more skilled jobs. And we've seen in the last quarter alone the jobs that back and we'll be spending on NHS. So that, that's that's not the really right information people have. No week to discuss Brexit and how it's going to uh, benefit Stoke on Trent. Recently, they've got a fantastic steel foundry there. That's we will, I will be out making the case to the government that if we want to revitalise, then we need a good transport system because we are in a be looking at connecting the city with trams, which uh, Nottingham integrity. You registered your home addresses time on the M6 up and down. Uh, I would, as we all know, the M6 is like a car park. I would spend half my life down. I was there, I was at the game. A very dangerous route for politics to take because I've seen many adults. The other part, the main part, the beginning of this, what I will do is I'll bring a huge profile to this place and it will kick the establishment up the backside. This place is... I'll we'll bring in Adam, okay. Adam Coldclough here from the Green. I think given a good account of itself. Uh, I'm afraid Mr Nuttall's contribution hasn't helped that, but the city itself We've shown ourselves to the whole world what a, what uh, quite regularly. Uh, and what is a disgrace, actually, you know, to talk about the issues surrounding drugs and drink. And the big one, as I've said earlier, is affordable housing. And we've not done neither Labour... This evening until 8, looking at some of the issues and speaking to some of the candidates in the Stoke-on-Trent Central by-election. As far as these two to enjoy the great outdoors, all you need is me, Stoke. Every Sunday lunchtime, Elton. there are swathes of around the city centre, which is going to build uh, 1,200 new homes. They've already stunned the city, um, but you know we need what to go places further. places like the Victorable homes in the city? Well, we we do have a plan uh, as a as a party to build 300,000 uh, new. Affordable. I mean, look, this goes back generations. It, it really started with the Conservative government under uh, Margaret Thatcher, who had from that you've gotten everywhere at the moment. It's, it, it's simply about supply and demand. We have an undersupply of houses and an oversupply of people. That pushes up the price of houses means that there isn't enough to go around. And you know what that boils back down to? Housing net. It's too many, the population's grown too fast and we're needing to build service. What pressure would you exert and on who to do something about waiting times at A&E at the University Hospital? 